Human beings are going to Mars, settling the land of an alien planet and beginning a new era as a multi-planetary species. But what does that mean for life on Earth? Are we left behind as Elon Musk and his chosen few evolve to a higher level in outer space? Or is the planet Mars just another resource for us to exploit and capitalize on? One thing we can say for sure, life as we know it will never be the same. This is The Space Race. Everyone loves to talk about how AI will either save the Earth one day or take it over completely and knock human beings off of our top spot on the evolutionary ladder. And Mars could be the first real testing ground for how AI is going to handle the scenario where it is literally in charge of a planet. The fact of the matter is that before human beings ever arrive, Mars is going to need to be populated by robots. This isn't like going to the moon where we can just touch down, bounce around for a few hours, and then head home. Mars is the long haul, and it's going to be brutal. In order for a human crew to have any chance at doing anything effective once they arrive on the red planet, they are going to need some pre-established infrastructure, and they're going to need a helping hand. The biggest obstacle that a Mars crew is going to face on arrival is the transition from a zero-gravity environment to a medium-gravity planet. Relative to the Earth, Mars has about one-third the force of gravity, but that is still going to be enough to leave our astronauts temporarily crippled in the hours and even days following touchdown. If you look at astronaut Scott Kelly returning from an extended stay on the ISS, he has to be carried away from the Soyuz capsule like a giant sack of potatoes. Then they lay him down on his stomach and let him slowly figure out how to regain his balance. As he finally tries to take his first steps, there are two men there to hold him up and keep him from falling over sideways. It's going to take days before he can confidently walk on his own, and in addition to that, astronauts returning from zero-g are going to experience nausea, dizziness, fever, and joint pain. Your body kind of freaks out. Now, imagine going through all of that while confined to a spaceship on Mars with no one around to help you. Or, you could have Optimus, the Tesla bot, and his Boston Dynamics dog Spot ready and waiting to quickly nurse a crew back to full health. And not only that, but there have been dozens of these helpful automatons operating on Mars for the past two years. They've been busy unloading cargo ships, setting up base camp, deploying solar panel arrays, and planting the first greenhouse on Mars. Now, instead of a desperate struggle for survival, our crew is fully prepared to make the most of their time exploring the Red Planet and establishing humanity's foothold in deep space, and it's all thanks to AI. The autonomous robot population on Mars will outnumber the human population by a significant degree, and they're going to have a much easier time surviving up there than we will. So we get to watch this scenario play out, where the silicon-based intelligence has the upper hand on the human being, and they get to decide if we live or die. That's what we're so afraid of with AI right now, isn't it? The idea that as soon as a generalized AI becomes smarter or more capable than people, they'll just wipe us out or enslave us all, turn us into batteries, whatever terrible thing you want to imagine. Mars would be the ultimate proving ground for a fully autonomous AI because there's such a long communications delay between the Earth and Mars, it's impossible to remotely control these robots. They have to be able to just work on their own and figure stuff out in real time. It also means that there's no possibility for immediate human intervention to stop the AI from making a bad decision. If you watch someone using Tesla's full self-driving beta, you're seeing AI drive a car through real-world traffic, which is kind of amazing until it's not, and then the human driver has to grab the wheel and stop the car from just driving itself into a post. On Mars, that intervention from Earth won't be able to happen until 10 minutes after the bot has already made a terrible mistake, and then it's another 10 minutes after that for Optimus to get the message that he screwed up. And then, worst case scenario, if the AI does go crazy, kill humans, and take over the planet, then at least it happened first on Mars, and hopefully that at least buys us enough time to prevent it from happening again on Earth. But on the flip side, if we can use Mars to prove that AI is safe, effective, and reliable, then it could greatly accelerate the development of that technology to make life better for us on Earth. 
we've got to talk about how colonizing Mars is going to affect the medical field, because this mission has the potential to be extremely hazardous to people's health. But we won't know how bad the effect is until we send a few batches of people to Mars and back and see what happens to them. There's going to need to be dedicated medical research into deep space exposure on the human body. Gravity is obviously a major concern. Like we said earlier, these people will go from 1G on Earth to 0G in their transport ship for about 7 months, give or take, then one third of a G on Mars, then back down to 0G for the return ship, and now they're back to 1G on Earth two years later. What kind of effect is that going to have? And the longer time they spend away, the harder this gets. What happens when someone comes back from five years on Mars? we'd realistically need to have a dedicated Mars Rehabilitation Center that would have to take care of these people and get them reintegrated with Earth gravity, if that's even possible. We'd have to assume that there is some point of no return where a person never fully rebounds and long-term exposure to Mars leaves them permanently disabled on Earth. What happens when someone is born and raised in low gravity? Would they ever be able to live comfortably on Earth? Just imagine going to space, spending seven months weightless, and then coming down to find that the force of gravity has increased three times over what you've been accustomed to. It would be crushing, literally, like trying to stand up straight on board a rocket in mid-flight, and without help, it would be deadly. On average, a person can only survive a force of three Gs for about one hour before they experience a full system shutdown and die. On top of gravity, we have to worry about the physical effects of radiation. The spinning iron core of the Earth generates a powerful magnetic field that surrounds the planet and shields us from the sun's most harmful radiation. The ISS is close enough to the Earth that it still experiences most of the benefit from this protective layer, but Mars does not offer the same protection from the cosmic elements. It's not magnetic, and it doesn't have much of an atmosphere either to provide a physical barrier between the surface and the uncontrollable nuclear fusion generator that is our sun. The thing about cosmic radiation is that we really don't know much about what it does to the body or what quantity is actually going to be harmful. The only real experience we have with sending human beings beyond the Earth's magnetic field is the Apollo program astronauts. Their exposure to the cosmic environment doesn't seem to have had any significant effect. Here's 93-year-old Dr. Buzz Aldrin celebrating the 54th anniversary of his moon mission. He's wearing three wristwatches, eating a big plate of steak and eggs, and he looks ready to punch out another flat earther. So being in space clearly didn't cause him any trouble, but Buzz and his peers only spent a few days in outer space at one time, so it's not anywhere near enough data. So it's more than likely that the medical field is going to need to learn how to treat people for exposure to cosmic radiation. That could be an increased rate of cancer, or it could be something else entirely. This all sounds kind of brutal, but there is a silver lining. History has already shown that the discoveries and advancements that we make in human spaceflight can have a direct positive effect at improving our medicine on Earth. Everything from laser eye surgery to breast cancer detection to surgical robots, ultrasounds, pacemakers, these were all either made possible or made better by discoveries and innovations that happened in the space program. Here's where things start to get tricky, because on the one hand, yeah, colonizing Mars is important because we are pushing the boundaries of science and our understanding of the universe. That's what NASA is in this for, and people like Elon Musk think this is worthwhile just for the sake of extending human consciousness into the solar system and making life multiplanetary. But even Elon Musk doesn't have the funds to build a whole Mars colony, and NASA definitely doesn't have that. So if we're going to get major corporate sponsors behind this idea, shareholders and investments and all that, then there's going to need to be a profit involved. People on the Earth are going to need to be able to make money off colonizing Mars. Otherwise, probably doesn't happen. So what does that look like? Obviously, resource extraction and mining on Mars is a huge potential industry. We already did a whole video on that, check it out after. But the problem with this kind of industry is that it is something we can automate fairly easily. In the Grand Musk vision, there are 1 million people living in a giant city on Mars. And that sounds great, but it faces us with a pretty big question here. What are all of these people going to do? Elon created a bit of a paradox for himself on this one. If his Optimus Tesla bot turns out to be as effective as he's promising, then it would kind of eliminate the need to send any human beings to Mars at all. 
Now, that doesn't mean we won't go, it's part of our base level animal instinct to migrate and settle new land, but it really does demand a lot of thought about what the labor economy on Mars would be and how we would incentivize a million people to take that leap. It's hard not to think about the movie Blade Runner when you get into this headspace. A big aspect of Ridley Scott's world building in that film was this constant advertisement for off-world migration. A new life awaits you in the off-world colonies, the chance to begin again in a golden land of opportunity and adventure. And in the context of Blade Runner's setting in the miserable hellscape of future Los Angeles, the implication is that if people need that much encouragement to go, then these colonies must be even worse than staying around on a dying Earth. Or we could think about a more historical analogy, like the European settlement of North America. Most of these people who crossed the ocean into the unknown did it to escape from something, either poverty or religious persecution, skipping out on bad debts or running from the law. They were promised land, freedom, and a new beginning in the new world. For many of them, that promise worked out. They flourished in America and built the most powerful nation on Earth. That's the story that we all know and love. But on the flip side, a lot of people were not able to survive the hostile and unforgiving new environment they found themselves in. Starvation, freezing to death, getting murdered by rightfully pissed off native people, eaten by bears. America was a dangerous place, but people went anyway. Now, a few hundred years into the future, maybe humanity is ready to try it all over again on Mars. In the words of Elon Musk, success is far from certain, but excitement is guaranteed. In case you didn't know, we put that on a badass Starship t-shirt, so you should check it out. Links down below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.